The Little Albert experiment is a famous and highly controversial study in the history of psychology, conducted by John B. Watson, one of the founders of behaviorism, and his graduate student, Rosalie Rayner, in 1920 at Johns Hopkins University. The experiment was designed to demonstrate how emotional responses, specifically fear, could be conditioned in humans. Their subject, an infant known in the study as Little Albert, became the central figure in one of the most well-known examples of classical conditioning in human behavior. Here's a detailed account of the Little Albert experiment. John B. Watson was a prominent psychologist who, along with his behaviorist contemporaries, believed that all behaviors, whether complex or simple, could be explained in terms of observable responses to stimuli in the environment. Watson rejected the study of internal mental states like thoughts, emotions, and desires, which could not be directly observed. Instead, he focused on observable behavior and believed that human behavior could be shaped and controlled through conditioning. Watson's goal in the Little Albert experiment was to demonstrate that emotions, such as fear, could be learned through the process of classical conditioning, as first demonstrated by Ivan Pavlov in his experiments with dogs. Watson wanted to prove that humans could be conditioned in the same way and that even complex emotions could be the result of conditioning rather than being innate or biologically determined. The subject of the experiment was a nine-month-old infant referred to as Albert B., later commonly known as Little Albert. His real identity has been a matter of speculation and research over the years, but during the experiment, he was a healthy, normal baby who lived at the hospital where the study took place. Little Albert's mother worked as a wet nurse at the Harriet Lane Home for Invalid Children, a part of Johns Hopkins University. Albert was described as a calm and unresponsive baby who rarely cried, making him an ideal subject for Watson's experiment. At the beginning of the study, Albert was exposed to various stimuli to gauge his natural reactions, which were at first neutral or positive. Watson and Rayner first conducted a series of baseline tests to observe how Albert responded to different stimuli and whether he had any innate fears. They exposed Albert to the following objects. A white rat, a common laboratory animal, a rabbit, a monkey, various masks with and without hair, cotton wool, burning newspapers. During these tests, Albert did not display any fear of the objects. In fact, he was either indifferent to or curious about them, particularly the white rat, which he would reach out to touch and play with. His calm reactions provided Watson and Rayner with a starting point. They could now attempt to condition a fear response in Albert using one of these neutral stimuli. The experimenters chose the white rat as the neutral stimulus they would condition Albert to fear. The conditioning process occurred over several sessions. Watson and Rayner needed a stimulus that would naturally produce a fear response in Albert, which would act as the unconditioned stimulus, US. They used a loud, frightening noise. Watson would strike a steel bar with a hammer behind Albert's head whenever he reached for the rat, causing a sudden, jarring noise. This loud sound, which startled and frightened Albert, served as the unconditioned stimulus, and Albert's natural fear response, crying, flinching, or moving away, was the unconditioned response. Watson and Rayner then paired the neutral stimulus, the white rat, with the unconditioned stimulus, the loud noise. Each time Albert reached out to touch the rat, Watson would strike the steel bar, producing the loud noise. This was done several times over multiple sessions. After several pairings of the white rat and the loud noise, Albert began to exhibit signs of fear at the mere sight of the rat, even without the accompanying noise. This demonstrated that the rat had become a conditioned stimulus, CS, and Albert's fear of the rat, crying, crawling away, or showing distress, was now a conditioned response. He had been, once the conditioned fear of the white rat had been established, Watson and Rayner wanted to test whether Albert's fear would extend to other similar stimuli a phenomenon known as stimulus generalization. They presented Albert with objects that were similar to the white rat, including a rabbit, a dog, a sealskin coat, a Santa Claus mask with a white beard. Albert's fear response generalized to these other objects. He showed signs of distress or fear, crying, withdrawing, or trying to crawl away when exposed to the rabbit, the dog, the fur coat, and even the Santa Claus mask. 
This suggested that his fear was not specific to the white rat, but had extended to other stimuli that shared certain characteristics, such as being furry or white. While Watson and Rayner succeeded in conditioning fear in Albert, they did not make any formal attempts to decondition or extinguish the fear response. They theorized that Albert could have been desensitized through a process of extinction by repeatedly presenting the white rat without the loud noise or through counter conditioning, where a positive stimulus might have been paired with the white rat to undo the fear. However, the experiment ended before such an effort could be made as Albert's mother removed him from the hospital and Watson and Rayner were unable to continue working with him. As a result, Albert's conditioned fear responses were never fully resolved. The Little Albert experiment is remembered as one of the most ethically troubling studies in the history of psychology.